Welcome and happy Wednesday to you. This is another edition, stay at home edition of Inside Franklin Athletics. I am Brian Powers. And I'm Chaz Hill. And today we have with us a 1996 FCHS grad. He was a two sport, I want to say superstar. Uh, at FCHS. He played football and basketball while at FC, at Franklin High School. He was the uh, all-time leading tackler, all-time leading receiver, all-time leading best blocker on the football team. He played foot or basketball uh, where he won, I believe, two sectional championships. He was the uh, he scored over 2,700 points on the basketball court. He grabbed 3,000 rebounds. And he was also the leader in most hard fouls and intimidating looks after he hit someone on the basketball court. We have with us 2000 Illinois grad, Mike Krasinoy. Is that right? Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, Yeah. you were right. Uh, You know, sometimes you uh, go back to old memories and you can remember how to say even the unusual last names. So that's good. (laughs) Uh, so, Mike, how's everything going? Kind of just take us through how this this uh, crazy time is going for you and um, what you're up to now. Yeah, so uh, I work from home when I'm not traveling. Um, I work for a national nonprofit organization, the National Hemophilia Foundation. We serve people with uh, rare bleeding disorders such as hemophilia, von Willebrand disease, other uh, rare inheritable uh, bleeding disorders. And Uh, My job is I'm in charge of chapter development. So we have 52 chapters throughout the country, and I spend uh, a great deal of my time doing uh, leadership development, professional development work with um, all of those leaders at those uh, different entities. So uh, when I'm not traveling, I'm scheduling for other traveling and uh, doing webinars and other things like this to uh, connect with those chapter leaders and uh, my job hasn't changed that much because of, of being able to work from home. I know the work from home piece is quite the adjustment for some. Um, I will say having my kids at home now is a little bit more of an adjustment and trying to get them set up for uh, Zoom calls and other things that they have scheduled. So uh, that's been a little different. I'm probably busier now than I've ever been just because I think everyone is really um, trying to adjust to this new um, abnormal that we're trying to uh, experience. So. Yeah, it's it's been a been definite adjustment for for myself and Chaz, but it just sounds like your uh, your travel's been cut down a little bit. Yeah, I, we have not. I've not traveled since um, I think May uh, March twelfth was the last date that I'd come back from a, a work trip in Dallas, and uh, I've been grounded ever since. Uh, I don't know when uh, I'll travel again. Uh, it's kind of an uncertain time, kind of scary for some. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to stay optimistic like most, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're done with that. We're, we're tired of talking about the COVID or coronavirus or anything like that. Let's talk about, let's talk about yeah. you, Mike. Um, you, uh, you obviously loved sports growing up and uh, how, how kind of did you get into sports? What did you play? Just take us through like uh, as a, as a, younger kid be before high school? Yeah, so I um, I didn't grow up in Franklin uh, during the early years. Uh, I moved to Franklin when I was uh, middle of my fourth grade year. Uh, Northwood Elementary to all the Northwood Owls out there. Come on. Um, still remember the fight song and everything. So uh, it's funny no. how those, uh, those memories stick let's, with you. So Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, said that. Uh, we are Northwood. Northwood are we? We never lose our pep ability. Rob, 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 we do our best to pass the. Yeah, that's about it. Right about there is where I uh, struggle with it a little bit. But yeah, no, I I, um, I moved to Northwood. Uh, I, I moved to Franklin, went to Northwood, um, enjoyed my time in, uh, in growing up in Franklin. Um, I, I grew up in more of the um, city area. So being able to ride my bike and connect with people, lots of fond memories of playing in uh, different parks. Uh, and uh, the boys club and those types of things that I think really helped um, develop me um, both as a a person as well as an athlete um, in uh, being able to be involved in a lot of those pieces. Yeah, and was it, did you play like all kinds of sports or did you focus more on on basketball and football or? 
Yeah, I will say uh, basketball was my first love, you know, is what I uh, really enjoyed doing. That's probably um, how I got most involved in sports. Uh, played a little bit of uh, baseball, I think, maybe until uh, sixth or seventh grade. And then I kind of gave that up, um, wanted to focus more on playing uh, basketball. And I was playing basketball year round between AAU leagues and boys club leagues and the school um, program. So I uh, really stuck with basketball. And that's uh, what I was trying to do uh, the most, not because of, uh, you know, anybody asking me to or forcing me to, but just because that's really where my interests lie. Um, funny enough, getting into football, even though that's what I, you know, ended up going to college to play, um, which I guess if you have a choice to go to Moorhead State and play basketball or a Big Ten school to play football, not much of a choice there, uh, just in terms of thinking about that. But um, even though basketball was what I really enjoyed, I, I kind of fell into football. Um, a couple of buddies uh, and myself uh, hadn't played football growing up. And uh, our freshman year in high school just said, hey, let's uh, let's go out and try out for the football team. I didn't know much about football, um, just kind of uh, fell in and um, ended up falling in love with it as well. And um, I like to compete. I, I like sports in general. So um, it just kind of was a natural fit for me. Was your first day of football like a, a weight a weight room or after school like activity or something like that? Or was it like practice was your first day? Um, I think I, I think it was more of like some drills and some warm up stuff. I don't think we had all of our equipment and things. It might have been uh, right as you start during the summer. Um, I didn't even know like they were asking me, well, what position do you want to play? And I was like, well, I'd like to play a receiver. And they're like, you're too big to play a receiver. How about tight end? And I think maybe even at the time I was like, what the heck's a tight end? You know, like I, that's how much I knew about football coming into it. So I was fortunate to have some uh, some great coaches that, um, you know, were able to work with me and, and allow me to excel there. What was that first padded practice like? Um, well, uh, as Brian mentioned, some stats I didn't know about, you know, intimidating or, or you know, hard fouls, those kind of things. I've always been, uh, you know, I don't like I don't mind mixing it up, um, you know, and, and uh, I feel like I was always have kind of a, um, a go get them kind of aggressive attitude. And what I um, my favorite basketball player, for example, growing up and I tried to, you know, emulate him just like kids do on a playground stuff was Charles Barkley. So, you know, that was like my style of basketball. So. Football was no, uh, you know, it didn't feel unnatural to me to go and mix it up with people. Uh, and, you know, and maybe in some ways, you know, allowed me to, um, you know, do even more uh, of that that you can't do on the basketball court but that you can do on the football field. So when you were when you first got out there, uh, you mentioned some coaches and stuff. Who are some of the coaches who you really remembered in, in middle school who helped you out? Uh, well, um so in, in basketball or in, in, in yeah, in either, in either, uh, you know, I, 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 it, it's a challenge to start to mention them because if I start to mention them, I know I'm going to leave out some of the important ones, but, um, you know, I, I even had, um, just even thinking about, uh, you know, playing in rec leagues and things at the, at the boys club and, uh, many kids, dads that were our, our coaches and things that, that are, um, I think you, you take away a little bit from every coach that you have. Um, even the ones that aren't so good, you learn some lessons from them. Uh, you know, it, it's amazing how that is. Maybe it's, you know, you learn what not to do by watching certain coaches. You learn uh, some things by watching some coaches do some things. So, um, you know, I, I think probably the most formative coaches I had were, were more so uh, when I started to take it more seriously and it wasn't just playing for fun. So those coaches that I had most in uh, in high school were probably the ones that impacted me the most. Um, but at the uh, middle school level, um, you know, even even athletic directors like Charlie Blair, you know, like, you know, different people that, uh, you know, I could throw out lots of different names that impacted me that um, if I was to go down the list of coaches, uh, you know, I, I feel like I'd leave out some of those important role models that I had, too. Yeah, that's 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 fair. We'll we'll let it slide. We'll let that one slide. <laughs> uh, so you're playing at middle school. What are some of the memories that you have just playing sports in the middle school? I know. I mean, it's kind of the first time you start playing against other people from from other communities who you don't really necessarily know much about. Um, what are some of the memories from there? Yeah, um, you know, I think, you know, probably similar to many people. Um, I had to work a lot for the things that you get. Um, I wasn't, uh, 
you know, an A-team player um, when I was in middle school. I don't think I was even on the A-team until I was in eighth grade, um, you know, in, in sports, uh, even though basketball is what I loved and wanted to be involved with it and really enjoyed the camaraderie and teamwork aspects of those things. Uh, I wasn't necessarily one of the uh, top players uh, growing up in that, but I loved uh, being able to be out there and playing and, and you know, being involved with some of those things. So, um, you know, some of those good memories of just being um, hanging out with uh, different players in between, you remember some of the little things, you know, the, you know, goofing off in uh, a layup line and certain things like that, that kind of come back as a flash of memories of, uh, of growing up there, but um, really enjoyed and think I, I um, one of the things that's unique about um, growing up in Franklin, where I was at, as opposed to where my kids are at now, which is a, you know, a bigger school in Indianapolis is, that I noticed is I got to play with a lot of the same guys for many years. And, you know, it seems like youth sports these days, they, uh, you know, you go on travel leagues and there's only maybe two guys, maybe at most from the same school, you, you mix it up, which has its own unique benefits. But I really feel like um, one of the great benefits I had was I got to play with like the same six, seven guys all the way through. So that that's, you know, one thing I think about being in a, a community based uh, high school like that, that offered um, something special for me. Right. So um, so we're, we're out of middle school and you're you're out of eighth grade and you're starting high school. You start playing football. Um, just kind of take us through your freshman year. And, and it's interesting to kind of talk to to people about the upperclassmen that they had. Where, do you remember some of the upperclassmen and how they kind of – did they take you under their wings? Uh, obviously, you'd have to carry helmets and pads and stuff like that. But Yeah, I don't know if there was too much of that hazing stuff. You know, more of just like, you know, joking around, uh, yeah, little things yeah. like that that happened. Uh, you know, I had the great fortune of, you know, as a sophomore playing on the varsity team. So, you know, that that comes with its own, uh, you know, unique pieces of it in the terms of, you know, they're your peers, but they're not your peers because you're much younger than they are. So, um, you know, I think that they like to, to goof around with me. And, uh, you know, my I have an older sister that was, uh, you know, that many of them knew more so than they knew me. So it gave me an opportunity for me to create my own uh, unique identity with some of that, um, you know, in, in terms of, you uh, players that I can think about that made a great impact. You know, I, I um, not that long ago, it seemed like I was in Franklin. I was talking to Richard Jordan, uh, just growing up, being a little kid. Uh, I remember him specifically, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, winning a basketball game and he was cutting off pieces of uh, net and he was handing it to little kids. And I remember telling him the story about, I was one of those little kids that you handed that to, you know? So, I mean, even, even people that were far, above me in, uh, in grade level, I do have fond memories of being able to, uh, you know, at least share with them the impact that it made on me growing up, uh, watching them as what they were to me, a superstar. So. Yeah. When you, uh, when you, with your freshman year of football and everything, when, when you were playing and when you were in games, was there, or even in practice, was there ever a moment where you were like, uh, this could mess with my basketball career. This is not something that I necessarily want to do. I definitely had people that shared that with me um, mm -hmm. that had concerns about, you know, um, you know, if you, if you play football, then there's, you know, concerns about, uh, you know, injuries, uh, you know, even though I think you can get injured in any sport that you, you play, um, you know, I, 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 was fortunate enough in high school, I probably got injured more playing basketball than I did football, <laughs> just in terms of sprained ankles and those kind of things that I think, you know, maybe more, uh, you know, things that happen in, in basketball. Um, I definitely had people tell me that. Um, I even had some coaches that said, you know, it's great that you're lifting weights and stuff, but don't get too big because it'll mess up your shot kind of thing. So, you know, you do hear some of that, but if it's something that you love doing, it's hard to, you know, listen to some of those voices and, um, you know, trying to de deter you from uh, doing something that you really want to do. Yeah. It, and at some point, you know, you got to make your own decisions and you've got to be who you want to be. And if you're enjoying playing football and you're doing it with your buddies, then it's just like, ah, I'm going to keep doing this. You know, I'm only in high school once play as much as I can. So, yeah. Um, so you're starting after football's over, you go into basketball your freshman year. Um, was um, who was it? Was uh, Bennett? Was that the coach? 
Yeah, Bennett would have been uh, the high school varsity coach when I was a freshman, yeah. Okay, so what do you remember about just your freshman year basketball? Um, I, you know, just high school in general is quite the adjustment, you know, right. going from a middle school into high school. I think you're trying to take a lot of that in. The, the competition uh, is raised a little bit. Um, at that point, as I mentioned early on in middle school, I wasn't on the A team and those types of things. So I wasn't starting. I, I wasn't, you know, I'd, I'd be lucky to get some minutes here and there in di different ball games and play mostly with uh, on the B team. So um, getting by the time I made it to high school, I started to excel and maybe to the point that I didn't even know what I was capable of doing because I never had that opportunity. So, you know, when you're starting to, uh, you know, grow physically as well and, you um, you know, when you're uh, able to dunk a basketball as a freshman and some of those kind of things that, you know, um, I think some of that starts to put you in different categories and puts different expectations on you as a player, too. So I think probably my, you know, freshman into my sophomore year was a lot of me growing um, from a maturity level of me being able to handle that different type of role on a basketball team or on a football team. Okay. Do you remember your first dunk? You stole my question. Too bad. Uh, um, no, I don't remember my first dunk, but I don't think it was in uh, in an organized uh, game for uh, the school system. It was probably on a playground or uh, you know something like that. So uh, I don't I don't know if I remember the first time uh, I would have done it in a game. But obviously, you know how everybody's always warming up before games, and you get those kind of dunks that happen all the time. But and in, in a game, uh, I think it might have been at. Uh, Province Park or something like that, you know, it, it might have been, a, you know, a pickup game, one of those kind of things. Can you still dunk? Um, you know what? Uh, I haven't tried in a long time. Uh, I'm definitely uh, can't jump like I used to uh, and a little slower at things than I used to be. But I try to stay in good shape, uh, you know, to keep up with that. But um, I don't know if I can dunk. That's a good question. Maybe that'll be another uh phase two video of me trying to uh, see if I can dunk again. That's what I was saying. If, if we, if we would have known this, we would have made it to where it's after your next meeting so that you can be in shorts and t-shirt, you can stretch out and everything like that. There you go. That's yeah. That'll be uh that'll give the, you, you guys something to look forward to the next time is watching me pin it on the front of the rim or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So after basketball, your freshman year, you've got um, the spring season and then the summer is that kind of when it when you were you able to get in the weight room? Was that when you started taking it more seriously? I know you talked earlier about just not being just for fun. Was that kind of when that clicked? Yeah, I started probably like with the you know taking it more seriously and doing the lifting stuff. Um, you know, going into my freshman year, so you start to bulk up. You're you're changing a lot physically anyway. Um, it, yeah, I definitely think that there was a change there. Um, you know, one of the things that it was probably a, a challenge for me and I, you know, kind of alluded to it with the maturity level is, you know, when you when you go and you're playing varsity and starting varsity football on, you know, playing on both sides of the ball and mm -hmm. playing varsity and then you go to basketball and I was on the reserve team. I think that was a hard, harder thing to swallow for me, um, you know, so. Uh, to now have to not be able to play with some of the same guys I just played football with, but now have to, uh, you know, play reserve basketball. And, you know, it's completely, you know, in retrospect, completely warranted at, the t at that time. You know, it's more of like, you know, you think someone's doing it to you or so those kind of things. And, um, you know, those are probably the biggest growth pieces that I remember, uh, you know, more so than even just physically is just trying to grow as um, a young man trying to figure all of that stuff out. Right. So how tall were you when you came into high school? Uh, 6'1", 185 maybe um, as a freshman. I think that's what my uh, uh, I was as a playing football. That's what. And I think over the course of the next year, I went from I went to 6'3", uh, uh, maybe 220 to 200 something in there, you know, so probably gained 30 pounds and, and a couple inches. And, um, you know, it, it, you know, that kind of growth probably then, you know, continued and I stopped probably growing height wise, uh, my junior year, uh, and just continue to grow out. <laughs> <laughs> and so are you six, four, six, five, six, four. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
Yeah, because I have a, a story for you in a little bit. So we've got, uh, we start uh, football your sophomore year, and you talked about how you, you, you started varsity your sophomore year. Um, and, and what was that year like for you? Um, I think we had a pretty good season. Uh, it was, it, I think our best year football wise was my junior year. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think, you know, being relatively, I mean, it's only my second year playing football. So I was trying to still figure a lot of it out, you know, and we didn't have a lot of the, uh, complex plays, um, that, um, and you know, a lot of the scouting and other things that happen these days. Um, I don't know if all of that stuff you know, was quite the same as what it is now. I know, uh, you know, it's a whole nother level. Um, sports is almost a business now, uh, even at the high school level, as opposed to, you know, being more about um, developing kids and, and and kids having fun with some things. But um, it, it was uh, it was certainly an adjustment trying to um, figure that out, trying to learn from uh, some of the older guys about certain things. I had uh, who actually, you know, one of them, Benji Betts, who had connected, um, you know, us um, to schedule this call. You know, he was my quarterback when right. he was a senior. I was a sophomore. Um, and I even his uh, younger brother, Eli, was a quarterback for me as well. So, um, you know, being able to connect with guys and, and learn from them was probably um, some of the biggest impact. And as I mentioned, high school coaches, you know, there, there were so many of them uh, on that, even on that football team that, you um, I really enjoyed even just watching them interact with each other. You could tell they had great relationships between Dotson and Hosman and Leonard and Bardwell. And, you know, the list kind of goes on uh, with some of those people in different position coaches. So it was, uh, you know, that I learned a lot from upperclassmen and, and uh, watching coaches. Was there a, you know, coming into football as late as you did, was there a, like a fundamental skill that was like the hardest for you to like get I get, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think, um, you know, being uh, on the line uh, for the mm -hmm. most part is tight end. I think the blocking stuff is yeah. certainly uh, something that you can pick up uh, relatively easy because we didn't have a lot of complex blocking schemes. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the passing game, learn how to read coverages, uh, coverages that change. Some of those, that was all foreign to me. Had no mm -hmm. clue what that was. You know, I just like, you know, you think about when you go back in the backyard, it's just this is the route you're running and you don't change it based upon coverage. And to have some of those kind of things start to be thrown in was a whole new aspect of it. And over time, it's something I really enjoyed. I mean, outside of uh, outside of uh, football, sports like soccer and some of these others uh, are true team sports. You know, one guy screws up and the whole play's busted mm -hmm. uh, versus basketball. You can have one or two people that could just dominate uh, regardless of what everybody else is doing on the, on the court. So I think I had to learn to appreciate that part of the, uh, of playing football. Um, and it's, so it's not just about you doing your job. It's about you being accountable for the other people to make sure they're doing their job. And that was a, that's an interesting thing to learn uh, when you're growing up. Yeah. Was there a, sorry, Brian, uh, was there like a moment that you kind of like fell in love with football or was it like a gradual, okay, I, I, I like this. I'm going to keep coming back. Or was there like a play or something you did or something you saw in practice or something that just said, wow, this is, this is awesome. Yeah, it's a good question. And I'll, honestly, I've never really thought about it. Um, mm -hmm. it. It was one of those things that just kind of evolved. I think when you start to excel at something and get recognized for something that certainly makes you enjoy it more. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that certainly plays into it. Um, I mentioned that team aspect of, you know, there are, um, you know, football and like um, other sports has even that next level of team aspect uh, mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, it's it's your responsibility to get the best out of everybody, even the players that might not be the best player in that position. And, and but they're the best player we have. So we have to figure out how to get the best out of them. Those types of things were probably the biggest, um, you know, learning curves for that. But um, it's also what made me appreciate and, uh, you know, be uh, more of a team player when it came to other sports, too. I think probably one of the things you had to learn quickest was just how to contort your body to catch bad passes with Benji Betts throwing you the passes. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know, it, it, that was definitely a process. I, and he would probably tell you it was uh, it was a learning curve to try to get me to catch uh, his balls. That, that was, you know. <laughs> 
uh, that he would throw me uh, a nice ball and maybe I wouldn't catch it. That, that was uh, that's a different, you know, catching a, a, a basketball is much different than catching a football. And especially when you're on the run, uh, you know, I remember like that, you know, it's something like a slant route. If, if you're not used to that, that's a that's a whole nother um, type of of being able to catch that. And it takes some practice. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, I was fortunate enough to get guys that would stick around after practices and throw with me for additional time. Because um, as being on uh, the end of the the line as a tight end, uh, most of my practice was spent with all the linemen. We did, you know, I've only ran a couple drills with the receivers and things. And so I had to spend time to get that extra time in for catching uh, passes because that was the only way I was going to improve. Yeah. So you, uh, you start basketball, then your sophomore year, or you start playing basketball your sophomore year. What was, were you, you like you said, you were, you were still on the reserve team. What was that year like? Uh, we had a good year. And in fact, that was probably the first year I had a, a, a dunk in a basketball game that I can remember, uh, you know, kind of going back to your uh, first question there. I think it might have been even the last game of the year kind of thing. Uh, and it was one of those that was, you know, it wasn't anything impressive. It's not like I dunked on somebody. I think it was like a loose ball and I was already down at the other end of the court, you know, uh, probably tired. He was the end of the game kind of thing. So I got a cheap one in, but it still counts and I'll take it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I, um, you know, that's, it was a uh, definitely like that maturity level piece of like, you know, I felt like I should have been a varsity basketball player, but I wasn't. So I think that kind of kept me bitter for a little part of it until I realized that, you know, I need to make the most out of this experience and, and learn and develop. And um, by the time I was a junior, um, you know, we had coach Clark then that came in um, my junior and, uh, and senior year and uh, absolutely loved playing for him. And I think he taught me a lot about uh, not just basketball, but about sports in general. He had a different level of intensity um, of a coach that I had not experienced, even um, coaching foot, you know, being involved with coaches from football, except maybe uh, Hossman. Maybe he might have been the only other one that was as intense as, uh, as Coach Clark was. So what was the difference between Coach Clark and Coach Bennett besides the, the intensity? I know Jake Sappenfield was on here a couple of weeks ago talking about how Clark would always just be red faced the whole time. What was uh, aside from the intensity, what was the difference in playing for them? Um, well, you know, I didn't have much of a relationship with Coach Bennett just because I, you know, I played reserve and 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 as a as a freshman and then reserve and um so I didn't have a, a great deal of interaction with him. So I don't know if it's a, a fair assessment, but you know, what I can say about um, coach Clark was that he really took the time to invest in me. Um, so, you know, taking time to sit back and, and, and coach me up on certain things and really the details of it, you know, it, it, like footworks, minor things that you don't really pay attention to, you know, it's just like, you know, your goal is just to put the basket into the hoop, right? That's, you know, you, you kind of think it's as simple as that. And so some of the details, um, the drills we were run where we break down a play into very small pieces so that we could understand each aspect of it, that that kind of level of um, intensity was not was there even that at that point, not just the red face, that kind of intensity, uh, but the intensity of like, you know, intensely letting us know every aspect of every play and breaking that down into small pieces so that we could figure out and understand why we're doing something and not just doing it. I don't want you to just de de not deny the ball in this way. You have to do it in this way because that's going to be the best way for you to be able to defend, um, you know, a screen, uh, you know, a wing pass, those kind of things. So just like the attention to detail and, and how it's the, the details are part of a bigger scheme for all of that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So you're starting, we're, we're going into your junior year and uh, this is now, this is my freshman year. Okay. So when I came, when I, I don't know how big I was at that, this point, uh, but when I got my driver's license, I still have my driver's license and it was, I was five, three, a hundred and I think 15 pounds. And one time during basketball tryouts, that's right, Chaz. I said, I said that I was like 16. <laughs> Five, three? Oh, I'm a little. I didn't stop growing until I was in high school or college. So we were in the basketball tryouts, and I remember walking out on the court, and you're there, and I had seen you in the halls before, and you're, you know, 6'3", 6'4", 240, probably 
230, 240. Yeah, I think I graduated maybe 225, 230. So I had to be a little bit less than that. Yeah. Well, to me, you were (laughs) 6'12, 295 pounds. I remember just walking out there one time and I got switched onto you. And I just thought to myself, oh, Oh, God, this this is not going to (laughs) work. And it (laughs) did not work. But luckily, luckily you were good. You just like, I think you just did a drop step and laid it up. And that was that was it. So uh, you I think I think actually, if I recall correctly, you even said something like good try or nice work or something like that. But it was good. (laughs) So so in a sarcastic way or that's that's what I that's what I'm like. I don't know if it was like, yeah, good try or hey man, the spit grader onto our practice squad. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going with I'm going with it was uh hey I see you're a little guy. Good effort there, buddy. Not as opposed to yeah, okay, keep guarding me. (laughs) <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Um, so football, your junior year, like you said, that's that was uh, that was uh, a pretty good year for you guys. Um, you had, I know you had. Um, was that the year with that was the year with with Phillips and Hagist and Petticord and all those guys, and that was a pretty good squad, correct? Yeah, yeah, we um, we played really well, um, and um, even you know uh, made it deeper into you know. Um, playoff kind of uh, football that we had ever had. And we had an unusual um, seating at that point because Washington Howe and Washington or Washington and Howe were both in our sectional, uh, Mm -hmm. which were completely different kind of football teams that we had played during the regular season. So that was an adjustment to try to figure out how to play uh, players that were, uh, you know, great athletes, not, you know, fundamentally, I, I think we, that's why we could hang with those, um, those groups is because we were fundamentally sound and we did have um, a great deal of talent and speed, but that was another level of speed uh, at some of the kids that we were playing there. So that was uh, definitely kind of an experience for me and trying to know that, uh, you know, that whole idea that there's always somebody out there better than you, uh, you know, um, sometimes going through uh, playing certain schools, uh, you you kind of get that feeling of, uh, you know, this this is this it? Then this is pretty. It's getting easy. And then to have some of those kind of things happen, I think, uh, you know, kind of shed the light on, you know, if you really want to play this and make it to another level, you've got to you've got to be able to compete at that level with uh, with those types of players. So was there kind of a moment? And was it your junior year where you were just like, okay, this has slowed down a bit. I feel like I'm significantly better than a lot of the people I'm playing with. Was that kind of that year or, or was that a gradual thing? I think it was somewhat gradual, but I definitely had some eye-opening, um, you know, pieces in terms of playing against some of those players. I also um, went to um, several different football camps between my junior year and senior year. Um, I went to camp at Illinois where I ended up going to school Um and uh, got out outstanding camper, um, you know, and that's where they really started to do more of the recruiting of me. Uh, went to the Bishop Dolahan camp and some of these others that um, allowed me to compete and also, you know, in many ways allowed for me to put myself out there, you know, coming from a school that didn't have uh, at the time a, a lot of great football history in terms of it's not like we won sectionals and regionals and all that stuff every year. So, coming from a, one of those schools, I think it gave me uh, the exposure I needed to be able to show that I can compete with uh, players at, at those types of schools. What is like a memory you have from that year where you're like, whether it was a touchdown or a hit or anything like that, what was, do you, do you have a memory like that? Uh, there were probably a lot of memories. Uh, I think one that jumps out to me just in, in, in through the nature of some of the, where our conversations have gone. Uh, I remember uh, the end of the game, uh, really close to the end of the game. And um, we uh, were down um, and um, the only way we had any chance of winning was to get a turnover. You know, we had, we had to, you know, that, that was, we had to fight to try to get the ball and uh, they weren't necessarily, it wasn't, there was enough time on the clock where they weren't, you know, it wasn't take a knee, but they were actually needed to run plays and they were running, running plays. And I remember looking at several of the seniors at the time when I'm a junior and looking at them and their faces of like, this is it for us. You know, we're done with football. And I think that um, in particular 
sticks out to me because I think it gave me a different, like I wanted to win for them as much as I wanted to win for myself. So that, that definitely sticks out to me as, uh, uh, as a memory. Um, but also, you know, I, I think, you know, there were two or three plays on that drive that I was like a, you know, a freak out there on the football field, uh, you know, trying to trying to get that turnover that we desperately needed. And I remember some of those being some of the, uh, you know, game tape that was sent on for recruiting and other things uh, because, uh, you know, I was, I was trying to get in there um, as part of the defensive line, try to get in there to make, you know, make something happen. So. Did you, uh, were you a talker on the field or on the court? Um, not really, but I would definitely talk if I was talked to, um, I, you know, I, I definitely wanted to be one of those that let my game speak for me. Um, but you know, I, I didn't like the talkers as much. So, and I think sometimes, uh, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, I have, you know, that component of an aggressive side to me, uh, I think sometimes those talkers seek you out too. Uh, so I think there were definitely times where I, I talked a little bit, but, um, for the most part, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't do that, but I wasn't afraid to talk back when I was talked to, if that makes okay. sense. Is there a favorite exchange that you can remember that either someone's something, someone said to you or, yeah, you so, or something? yeah, my favorite one is actually from basketball, not football. Yes. Uh, okay. So I remember it was, uh, I think it was our at my senior year, um, and we had sectionals at Center Grove. And Center Grove also at that time had a great tight end. Um, I think that uh, might have even led the, uh, um, you know, the county in terms of you know tight end receptions and touchdowns or whatever. And Center Grove's always had some really high quality football teams. We never played them; they were above us in a, in um, you know what. Uh, you know, 4A, 5A, kind of, they were above us at the time. So we never played them in, in football, but I remember several, uh, this is the game before our game and you've got, you know, you're kind of, you know, going to the concession line and those kind of things. And I walked by the student section, Center Grove, and I remember them like chanting the name of um, that player. And I'm trying to think of what his, I think it was Spitler was his last name, uh, tight end. Maybe you'll have to look him up. But I remember the whole student section saying Spitler's better. And they were doing spitlers better, you know, that kind of thing. And, and, and like taunting me on and I didn't even pick up on it, but I think somebody else that I was kind of walking with was like, that, they're, they're talking about you, you know, like, and I was like, what, you know, like I didn't even pick up on it. So uh, I remember that game. I ended up having a dunk that game. And I remember walking, uh, running by a, they, that student section on my way back through and saying, how good is Spitler now? Or I said some, you know, <laughs> threw out something like that uh, to them because I wanted to, so, you know, those kind of things stick with you. And even though, you know, that was, you know, an hour and a half later, I made sure that those those guys that were in the front row giving me a hard time uh, were able to make sure that they, you know, saw what I j had just done on the court kind of thing. So <laughs> it's amazing. I think uh, a common thread of a lot of these, because we ask a lot of our guests that same question. Uh, Center Grove is a common occurrence. Not going to lie. They, they've been yeah. reoccurring quite a bit for that question. Yeah, yeah, that is, I, that, that is interesting that uh, that they would come up like that. I think you know just something about uh, Center Grove kids that you know, and even though I you know I got to know many of them, I played AAU with several of them, and you know they're 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 good kids, but they were certainly uh, fun to to hate from the sports perspective uh, growing up. So your uh, your junior year in basketball uh, was the was your was sectional championship, the first back to back, the first of the back-to-back -back with coach Clark. How, how, how cool was that in a sport that, that you love and is your first love? How fun was that to win and just kind of go through that? Oh, it was fantastic. You know, I, I'm winning at anything is fun. Um, and when you can win at something that you love doing and that you put a lot of time and effort, the hard work, uh, those wins uh, are even more meaningful. Uh, so, Having that kind of success, uh, I think we had a really good team uh, that year. In fact, um, you know, I, I know we uh, had lost in that uh, in our regional, but I think the team that beat us, uh, Shelbyville, ended up winning regional, maybe even went to semi-state, you know, those types of things. And I know uh, Coach Clark and many of the younger kids um, when I was going through had great success after us. 
I think we kind of laid a foundation for those expectations of this is what we're about as a basketball team. And um, my hope is that something that we did that year made a lot of those other years special down the road. So, um, you know, it's definitely some some good memories uh, of, you know, being able to to win sectional. I, I think that was the first sectional we'd won in, you know, quite some time, maybe eight to 10 years kind of thing. So um, that was special, certainly. Yeah, I think that was the first sectional since like 89, 90. I think when you were talking yeah. about Richard Jordan, because yeah. I, I remember I remember going to that game too. Um, so so in between your junior and senior year, like you talked about, you, you're you talking to Illinois. Are, are other schools recruiting you? And is it for both sports, basketball and football? Or Yeah, I was definitely being recruited more to play football. Um, you know, I think not only do they give more scholarships, but – um, you know, I think I was being looked at more as, uh, um, you know, a diamond in the rough kind of talent. Uh, you know, I think many of my uh, football coaches that were, you know, advocates for me um, probably could share, hey, this is, you know, he's only been playing for two years, three, those kind of things. You know, he's still learning those kind of things. And um, I remember, you know, having the ability to, you know, have some of those uh, informal conversations of, you know, different people that would come to recruit and talk to coaches and being able to chat with them. And, um, you know, I think I was more looked at as a project, uh, than, you know, somebody that was immediately th thought of as coming onto a football field and dominating, uh, you know, during my early years. So, um, you know, the, I think that that's, uh, definitely a lot more from football perspective, but, um, I did have good advocates for me on the, uh, basketball side of things. And I remember coach, uh, Clark, uh, even though he knew I, I was probably going to be going the football route because of the attention I was getting, uh, he still gave me opportunities to to play and be seen by different people. And I remember um, I, there was some kind of uh, it was after the season, some kind of classic, you know, that they pull some of those together. They had some smaller, um, you know, uh, colleges and things that could you could get some exposure and play some pickup games almost with. Um, and I remember him advocating that, hey, I know this might be what you want to do, but. Um, you know, maybe you want to give it a shot and 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 uh, see what you know you can do and that kind of thing. And so, um, I I definitely had some recruiting for that. Like I said, I think uh, I had you know probably the most serious to go uh, play at Moorhead State uh, for uh, basketball. And I they I don't even know if they ever got as far as offering me a scholarship, but they were definitely ones that were um, one of the bigger of the basketball schools that I went to that were having those kind of conversations with me. Yeah. So um, we start, we go into your senior year and uh, you've got, you've got football. Um, you, you know, you've had a great junior year. You're getting recruited. Just talk, you know, take us through your senior year. And you, you saw the look in those seniors um, faces the year before. And you, I'm sure that's something that's stuck with you. And so you, you knew what that was going to be like. It's your last hurrah. Um, how, how was that? And, and did you take over like a leadership role on that point? Um, I think I did more to the end of the, of the season than I did initially. Um, I think, you know, as being young and getting caught up in some of the recruiting stuff and, you know, I felt pretty good at that point that I was going to be able to play some sport after mm -hmm. high school. Um, I, you know, probably did have moments of thinking about, well, this isn't necessarily the end for me, uh, even though it might be for them uh, kind of thing, which is definitely a selfish way. But that's where the, the maturity of a high school kid trying to figure this stuff out, you know, so um, that was definitely uh, an interesting part of it. And, and certainly a learning piece for me is to try to figure some of that out. I think I became more of a leader as time went on than I did uh, early in the season. Um, I will say our football team was not that good either, which would made it difficult to be a leader. I think maybe we won, you know, three, four five games, maybe at most that year. Um, so, you know, definitely some rough uh, stretch there with that, even though, you know, I could excel, um, you know, in, in playing that um, we, we didn't uh, always have the outcomes that we wanted. And that, that uh, probably is trying for a young leader trying to figure that out is to still keep people motivated, even when you're losing. And why are we doing this and those types of things. So um, but I definitely continued my um, staying after practice um, and throwing. And I would try to I remember uh, Eli, uh, Benji's younger brother uh, and several uh, guys trying to, you know, get some of the younger guys to stick around after practice and throw. And so 
you know, maybe there's something there that, you know, uh, allowed me to look uh, more like a leader or to show some of these kids that, uh, you know, they have up, if they want opportunities to do more, they have to, you know, continue to throw. So playing seven on seven and some of those things after practice was over, even if it's just for 30, 40 minutes was something that I think was kind of a standard. I think every Thursday or something we stayed after to do some of that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I think that I became more of a leader as time went on in football. So you, um, your, your senior year in basketball, though, you've got – you're coming off a sectional championship. You've got a great group coming back. You've got, I don't know, the, the tallest and the biggest line in the history of high school basketball in my, in, in my eyes, as my 5'3 eyes, um, with you and, and Scott White and Chad Bowman – um, just a bunch of really tall. And even the younger, you know, Joe Hoagland, yep. you know, and Michael Whitted. I mean, there was, there were several, even some of the younger guys were, you know, we, we definitely had some size. That's for yeah. sure. And then um, it, was there ever a moment, <clears throat> like, did you go into that season just saying, okay, this, this is it for me. Like, this is my senior last year look. So it's funny. I was walking the other day with some people and they were telling, they, they were talking about just trying to get out and enjoy some of the weather uh, in this quarantine time. And they were sharing a story about they had a dream about high school or something. And I said, you know, and I, I'm, I'm dead serious. I still have a reoccurring dream that comes back to me every once in a while, you know, not necessarily every year, but every once in a while I'll have a dream that I have an additional year of eligibility to play high school basketball. So that's definitely something that when it was done with basketball and I knew I was, I mean, I think I committed to Illinois before the season started uh, for basketball. Um, so I knew it was my last time playing and I think I'd made peace with it to some extent, but knowing that I still have some of those dreams, you know, it's like that was my last time to compete playing basketball at that kind of level. So it's definitely was a, a special year and we, you know, we had, you know, still had a great deal of success. I think, you know, we continued on what we had tried to build the year before. And then I think the year after I left that, that class, I think they went to semi-state and mm -hmm. we had, you know, so um, it was definitely part of the process and I enjoyed being part of those teams. Um, it was definitely special to, you know, um, be at that um, and have a, a senior year. I didn't know it would end like it did. Uh, I didn't know when it would end, but I do, I did know that that was going to be my last time uh, playing uh, basketball. Um, at an organized level. Do you have a favorite uh, basketball moment that you can instantly go back to and just like see vividly? Yeah. Uh, well, I mentioned the one that uh, <laughs> Senator Grow is probably one of the fondest ones there. Uh, I remember, <laughs> I remember a look on, uh, uh, I think it was coach Hall and coach uh, Clark's face. Uh, we were doing layup drills and um, it, you know, I think we were doing like a backdoor drill. So you have a guy that's out there trying to de defend the, the wing pass and um, your job was to get a bounce pass from the coach and then a layup. And uh, I think and they even told us, you know, make sure you're laying up. And I, I think I, I dunked it and I broke the rim. And I remember how, you know, it was, let me tell you, this was not like, uh, it, it was kind of flimsy. It was probably needed to break anyway, because it was one of those that made a lot of noise every time you hit it. You know, you kind of hear the shake of the spring inside. But I remember breaking it and it just it just stayed down. You know, the, the spring inside just basically broke. It wasn't like, you know, uh, Daryl Dawkins, you know, glass shattering. It was nothing, nothing like that. But I broke the rim. And I remember just the look on their face like, well, now we can't do this drill anymore. You know, like you, you ruined this for us. So, you know, it's, that's where I was talking about. It's those little things like in between plays, in between, um, you know, uh, games that you probably remember most. But that, that's another memory that jumps out to me uh, of, you know, just a funny moment that happened because I didn't know what to say. And then I was like, oh, crap, I broke the rim. What do I do? I need to pay for that and all these kind of things. And I remember them. They, they were down there at the other end trying. They had maintenance over there looking at it while we're running drills now at the other end because we can't play on this goal anymore. So, uh, you know, those those kind of memories are, are fun. We told you to lay it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I think it was one of those kind of – they looked at me like, this is why you, you're not supposed to dunk during this drill, that kind of thing. So, Did they uh, like, you know, it help it. I don't know. Yeah, did you keep the rim? 
No, I don't know what they did with it. Um, it would have been a good, better story if I still was able to pull it out of, from behind a shelf or something. That would have been a better story. Yeah, it's so. right here. <laughs> okay, so uh, we know you got to get off here in a few minutes, but just real quick, talk about going to Illinois and being at Illinois and what was that like playing in the Big Ten and, and just the difference between that and, and high school and, and your experience there. Yeah. So, um, you know, lots of good memories. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it was one that I had actually had several injuries going through. So, you know, I think I told, I played in a total of like 15, 17 games over my four years of eligibility. Um, I, you know, I got to see some really cool stuff, got to go to the big house and other places that there were, you know, really unique experiences, got to go to a bowl game. Um, remember all of those kind of things, um, you know, that are definitely fond memories of it. Uh, I redshirted as a freshman, so uh, which I didn't necessarily think I was going to be starting or playing. I, I think we all kind of went into it with the expectation uh, to redshirt in some way. Uh, the coach at the time, the coach that recruited me was uh, Lou Tepper. Uh, and um, I know he had a great uh, philosophy of things and was really about the development of uh, creating solid young men as a much as a uh, coach and probably was ended up being part of his downfall, which is why, you know, the, he, he didn't last very long. I think he was only there for my freshman year. And then we had a new coach from then on. Um, but I remember, uh, you know, my, they, um, them forcing us to, uh, and I say force because it was not something that we signed up for, but um, we basically had a team that was 50% uh, minority, 50% uh, Caucasian. And, uh, he made sure that we, and it was uh, a, a point to make sure that we roomed with somebody of a different race. And uh, being able to learn from, uh, you know, you know, one of my roommates that's from East St. Louis, a guy I probably would have never connected with otherwise, you know, another uh, roommate was from uh, Chicago area. And um, getting to, to live with those people in close quarters in a dorm was a, was a great developmental thing for me and truly something that I um, really uh, appreciate the older you get and the more that, you know, a coach made a point to, to do that. And it was, it wasn't about football. It was about us coming together as a team and understanding each other, you know, kind of that remember the Titans kind of uh, moment, uh, you know, and learning that. So that's definitely a, a solid memory. Um, uh, I had lots of great coaches at that college level too. Many of them now are, are coaches in uh, bigger schools and, and uh, in the NFL. I mean, even uh, Sean Payton was our quarterback coach when I was a, a freshman um, and uh, learned a lot from him. Uh, and so, you know, just lots of good coaches, lots of good players, uh, guys I still keep in touch with to today, you know, just uh, being able to, uh, connect with them. It was certainly a, a, an awesome experience being able to go at that level and play football and compete. Yeah. Okay. So we do, we do leave a question. Um, and so the last person that was on here was uh, Ryan Firebend. And, and the question he left for you, uh, this is a good question. I'm surprised from Firebend, but <laughs> you know, whatever. He said, uh, Lynn, like you mentioned earlier, there wasn't a whole lot of, of football tradition necessarily as far as players go from Franklin. What was it like for you to come from a place um, like that that had the, the maybe the lack of football tradition and then become the Division I athlete that you were? I think it was, uh, it was really um, unique. Um, I think – in some ways, I felt like a fish out of water. You know, I still was relatively new and understanding all of that stuff. And, um, you know, when you get to that level of playing uh, football, it it's definitely business. You know, there's, uh, you know, you're, you're living football, um, you know, 24-7. And uh, to understand the aspects of uh, taking time to do those additional things, to watch film, to, um, you know, take care of yourself, uh, you know, I had to learn the hard lesson. I think my freshman year, uh, my first semester semester in college, uh, you know, when you and when you're going through high school, sometimes teachers will say you need to read this and be prepared. And you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, I'll read that. Those kind of things. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, I kind of took uh, college about the same level of seriousness in terms of academically. And I, I bombed uh, like three or four of my midterms. I mean, like just. <laughs> 
Like I was like, I remember being like, what is this? This wasn't even covered in the class. I went to all the classes. It wasn't that I wasn't going to classes, but I wasn't doing a lot of that additional reading or studying. I just thought that it would be um, as easy as it was for college for me in, uh, in high school. So I got a B in three Ds my first semester in college, uh, which then allowed me to say, yeah, this can't just be the business of football. It's got to be the business of academic. And um, I was uh, fortunate enough to, when we were first coming in as freshmen, we were guaranteed that we would have five years um, to finish our degrees and to do that. And um, after having some injuries and those kind of things, um, and tearing my third ACL, even though you'll have two knees, so you figure that one out. Uh, after tearing my third ACL, uh, I was like, kind of like, you know, I think third time's a charm. Somebody's trying to tell me something. Uh, so I finished my undergrad and crammed a year and a half master's program into a year within my five year scholarship so I could get it paid for. Uh, and so it's kind of like trying to help yourself develop uh, into, OK, this is not about sports anymore, but it's about whatever whatever is next for me. And so, you know, those are certainly some good memories of, you know, hard lessons at the time. But I'm glad that they happened in retrospect. Yeah. So, um, so we've got one more question for you, Chaz. Uh, so, Mike, I'm a big movie guy, uh, and you mentioned Remember Titans before. Uh, it's one of my favorites as well. Uh, but I think you can tell a lot about a person by the types of movies that they like. I kind of can see a little bit of their personality and kind of their upbringing a little bit. So, if you had to pick like three to five of your favorite movies that you really like, not in any particular order or anything, and doesn't even have to necessarily be the best or whatever, just three or five favorites of yours that you kind of always go Ooh, back to. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, so many uh, movies that I can think of kind of growing up are the ones that would come on every Saturday morning. You didn't have to put the VCR in, you know, the for many people watching, like what's a VCR potentially, but uh, you didn't have to worry about those kind of things. So like the, you know, movies like Top Gun and some of those that like were always on like you know, USA on a Saturday morning or something like that. I think a lot of those uh, types of movies, I think, uh, had an impact. The movie Hoosiers, uh, some of those great, like, you know, Rudy, some of those great stories, I think, in terms of sport related. Um, but, you know, that I think, um, you know, it, it's a good, good question that I'd have to probably sit and think about a little bit because, you know, nowadays it's kind of what the things that come out to my mind are not necessarily ones that I would say are, uh, the ones that impacted me the greatest, but the ones that are top of mind, you know, everybody watching Tiger King and all those kind of things now, you know, it's like, that's yeah. what everybody's asking. Awesome. So those are the kinds of things where I'm like, no, that movie has not impacted me or developed me in any way. But it's like the first things I can think of is like, what have I been watching here recently? Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I think some of those uh, movies that would come on, uh, you know, the Ferris Bueller's, the Top Gun, the uh, Pretty in Pink, some of those like 80s, yeah classic movies, uh, I think were probably some of my favorites that if I was to watch them still till today, uh, I'd still enjoy them. So, yeah. Well, hey, Mike, thank you so much for coming on here. I know we kept you a little bit over. Sorry about that. But uh, no worries. appreciate you coming on and kind of talking about your time here and, uh, um, you know, best of luck in, in everything. And I don't know if you coach or not, but uh, I think you bring a lot to the table as a coach if you if you don't just talking. Well, uh, it, I don't coach sports, uh, but I am uh, a certified uh, coach for in profession. So, right. uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I do a lot of coaching and adult learning and those types of things. And uh, I'm always one that's a life learner that thinks that you always can take time to develop yourself. And we're all trying to figure it out. And the more we can do for each other, the better. So that's awesome. Well, thank you so much again for coming on here. And uh and uh, maybe we, we look forward to here in a couple weeks getting you on again and watching you try and dunk and break another rim. All right. Well, I'll have to start uh, getting myself back in shape so I'm able to, you know, not do that and embarrass myself. Maybe if I can lower the rim to about nine and a half, you guys wouldn't even notice that I no. did that. I don't know. We'll make it <laughs> we'll change anything around here, Mike. <laughs> All, All right. right. You guys take care. All right. We'll see you later for Chaz Hill. I am Brian Powers. And we will see you later.